So good morning everybody once again welcome back to another film it's an absolute beautiful crisp morning today not a cloud in the sky and some would say that that's going to present some difficulties but do you know what it's this fresh and gorgeous after all the bad weather that we've had of late I'm going to enjoy this today it really is a pleasure to be out so I've come back to my local woodland where I was in my last film Typically with me, I don't have an agenda this morning. I just like to come out and have a walk and exercise the brain and the eyes in, in terms of looking for shapes and compositions. And I feel that when I work like that, I produce my best images and I also get the most out of the day because I'm not expecting anything and anything that I do get is always a, a pleasure to have. So typically um, broad-leaved woodland which I find is the best for me at least in terms of finding those sorts of images giving me lots of opportunities. We're still um, obviously in early very early spring so no wildflowers to speak of but um, that's not going to deter me. It's lovely to be here as uh, all the birds are now singing just hear a wren just over in that direction and over in that direction a little bit more distant is a song thrush but um, it's eight o'clock at the moment so I've missed the best of the dawn chorus but uh, if I hear any birds singing I will uh, certainly point them out to you <laughs> Truly beautiful light in the woods this morning. The sun just behind the camera there is still quite low and it's creating some lovely light beams through the woodland. And ordinarily I'd be looking to do something with that. There's some lovely backlit mosses on all the branches as well. I don't know whether you can see that at all. But this woodland, as beautiful as it is, for that sort of shot um, it's far too cluttered certainly this part so perhaps bear that in mind it's very easy to be absolutely blown away by those light beams and that, that sun star there but um, you've got to think about keeping the compositions clean and this woodland certainly this bit is far too cluttered to make any sense and we talk about that that word again that gets used a lot chaos well this is really is chaotic and um, very very difficult to make any sense of but um, keeping my eyes open and just moving through the woodland slowly um, and things will hopefully just fall into place like the pieces of a jigsaw almost it's so beautiful really gorgeous and it seems today that I've got it all to myself so I've entered a part of the woodland that's predominantly beech and on typically what you get in beech woodlands is a lot of leaf litter that, that hasn't rotted down and it just carpets the, the woodland floor. And if you remember on the last video that I did, I took a picture of a sycamore leaf against a nice um, wooden background and it really did work. It came out really well and you should perhaps look at that video if you get a chance I'll put a link above it just there but all the time I'm looking for similar things and I know it's uh, leaves again against backgrounds but um, things are a bit thin on the ground at this time of year but I've just walked through here and what I've come across is there's a buckler fern just laying flat in amongst the leaf litter and what's happened during the winds is that the, the leaves have blown and partially covered it so it's partly exposed partly covered and it's that contrast of the green against all the different shades and tones of the browns that caught my eye so what what i typically do is i get this camera that i'm filming on and i just frame it up quickly and take a shot and that's roughly the composition that i had in mind there or thereabouts and it's sort of nearly there but it's not quite and I've said this before in films in that if you're going to think about a shot for more than a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes it's probably not going to work and there's no point trying to fight 
to make an image when it clearly is something that you're struggling with so my advice in this instance would be just to get your tripod and carry on walking So I've found my first image and I really love this sort of thing. It's the sort of image that steps outside the norm and really challenges the viewer. So the camera is just set up over there uh, overlooking a little woodland stream. Now what the camera's pointing at is not actually what I'm photographing so I'll just talk you through that now. So what I've done here is I've got the 100mm macro on and I've got a case polarising filter. Now what the camera's pointing at are some dead leaves in the in the woodland stream and they're providing a nice bit of colour to the overall image. What I'm actually photographing is the beech tree in front and the sunlight is still quite low and it's catching the leaves side lighting them but making them very very bold in the image. It's quite a dreamy effect but it really challenges me as a photographer and I love finding this sort of thing. They don't always work 100% but it's really about exploring creativity and trying to find new approaches to common subjects and uh, I really like this. I'll show you on the back of the camera now what I've got and then I'll put the image on screen. Now I do appreciate this is quite difficult to see but uh, hopefully you get the idea before I put the image up. So the light, the sunlight is catching the pool, um, the, the woodland stream and the leaves in the base and they're creating this lovely golden swirly appearance and then of course you've got the beech tree in the background that's, that's the recognisable part coming into frame with the nice sharp leaves dotted around. The image reminds me very much of a Japanese print and it's that that's really drawn me to it. I think it's going to look really lovely when it's finished. I may just take a little slither off the bottom and may just take a little slither off the top just to emphasise the, di emphasize the diagonal of the twig coming in. But um, I'll, I'll decide that when I get back at the computer. But I think this just might be a really nice image. I certainly like all the nice golden tones in it. And they're quite nicely set against the bluish background that's bleeding through. I think it's going to work, I really do. Uh, I'll put that on now. So I found a shot that has caught my eyes. I've been walking through the woodland. I've actually taken the shot because I didn't want to risk the sun moving across the, the sky there and casting the frame into deep shadow. So I've grabbed it while I could. And that's very, very typical of woodland uh, type images. When you're working with low light as it's moving across the frame, you can wait ages sometimes for the backlighting to really take effect. When you see something, by the time you've got your camera out, half the time it's gone. So I, I grabbed it while I could and I'll just talk you through it now. So over my right hand shoulder, you can see there's a beech tree. And that beech tree's got some leaves coming out, low level leaves that are backlit. Now the moss on the bank in there is also got some lovely light on it. So what I've done, I've set the camera up with an 85mm lens, which is around about 60mm on a full frame camera. And I've framed just that small square up there. Now I've underexposed the image by three stops just so that I can get all that lovely backlit colours and textures 
um, correctly exposed so the rest of the frame will be in dark shadow quite a moody shot I've used an aperture of f6.7 because I want to throw the, the distracting woodland out as much as possible that'll go quite dark there's also quite bright sky above that I don't want to include so I'm going to crop the, the image ever so slightly down from the top and allow the light to, to give a little bit of flare just to create some mood and atmosphere so simple shot um, of a simple subject I will put that on now As many of you were interested in the last video, I thought I might as well include another poo identification lesson in this video. So here we've got the poo of a mink. Twisty, typical shape, very very slender. Often found with fish bones in them, but I couldn't see any on this occasion, but in a nice prominent place on the log and not far from the water course. Now mink as many of you will know, are, um, they're an invasive species in the UK. They're actually um, listed under Schedule 9 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act. So they're, um, they're a non-native species and um, very damaging to our own wildlife, particularly water bowls. So, sign that they're around. Um, always nice to see animal tracks and signs. And uh, it's certainly nice when you know what they are and you get a real feel for what's moving around in the woods so there you go sorry for those of you that are really into videos with poo in them but uh, I find it quite fascinating here a chaffinch just calling off to my right hand side Woodland's definitely getting busier. The light at the moment isn't, well I'm saying at the moment, from now on until much later in the day, isn't very complimentary. So I'm starting to struggle a little bit um, seeing images. Generally speaking, when the light is good, the images can jump out at you. So you've got to really try harder to find stuff when the light's like this. It's um, Certainly it's about 45 degrees in the sky, the sun. So as I look at my shadow, it's quite short. And uh, I have a general rule of thumb that says that if your shadow is actually shorter than you are at all, it's probably time to start thinking about packing up. But of course with modern cameras and advances in dynamic range, we can actually shoot in much harsher light than we used to. It's just that finding the images, certainly the ones that are really complementary, are more difficult to come by. So, I'll just keep looking. It's turning into more of a nature walk than it is a photographic out in this one. So, just picking my way through the woods and um, you can see just there, just moving through the woodland a nice thin path and I just wanted to talk about how to sort of try and get to grips with what animal might have made a path through the woods like that and what you need to do is follow the path obviously you've got to be careful not to disturb the animals but this time of day I'm pretty close to the the main footpath and uh, they'll be well away from here right now tucked away somewhere but if you follow the path and look at the obstacles on the root of the path you can get an indication of the size of the animal so if the path comes up against maybe I don't know, a fallen tree that's two foot two three foot high um, the scuff marks on the top 
um, look at the scuff marks chances are it's probably going to be a deer because badgers whilst they, they're good at climbing they would generally walk around something like that that height they would hop over something smaller no problem at all and similarly when pathways go into thickets of bramble and bracken um, look at the the height of the tunnel that, that's been created so if you've got something that's three foot high tunnel it, it, it means that anything from small mammal right up to a big mammal can use it but if that tunnel is reduced in height to about a foot and a half you then can rule out most deer and uh, munt jack are pretty small in the UK but most deer can be ruled out at that point so it's generally looking at the obstacles the marks they leave as they hop over things can all be indicators of, of the animal that made the path and if you're really heavily into wildlife photography it's worth getting to grips with those signs and, uh, and learning those things but back to photography um, struggling a little bit I'm convinced there's one more image left in the day but uh, the light as you can see is really harsh and I've got the camera turned down on the exposure because when the sun hits me as you can see there it's very very bright and the, uh, the photographs are just not jumping out and of course we keep saying it but February is a, and March is a lean time for, for nature photography certainly plants which is what I'm into um, botanical studies but uh, like I say, I'm convinced there's one more left in the day, so I'll keep looking. Well, I found a shot, <laughs> but not necessarily for today, although I am going to take it. Um, I was walking along the path, and you really can't fail to, to notice this. So spin that round and see if you can see what I'm looking at. A bit difficult with the uh, flare on the lens, so... This tree here and this tree here so I'll frame the camera up and I'll just talk you through it um, and I will take a quick quick picture just just for just for showing sake but this is definitely one of those images to come back to when the when the conditions are right and I'm talking atmosphere it might be nice in springtime when the um, when the path's looking a little bit less barren let's say um, but certainly you need the atmosphere, you need some fog um, for this one for sure because of the background, background distractions. But I'll frame this up now and then you can see the composition. So we've got the first main character which is this oak tree on the right hand side. And if you look, it's got a position that grows over to the left there and creates a nice dynamic look to the image. Now that has a relationship with the tree at the back which if you notice the branches on this tree are all growing in the opposite direction so you've got this relationship between the two main characters of the shot. What I've done is that this big limb here I've used to frame up the top left hand side of the shot and hold that as an anchor point and similarly this tree here the squiggly branch that you've got there on the right hand side holds the top right hand side of the frame now it's never going to make a great shot today but at least it's something that I know I can come back to and I've got a reference um, because I, like I say I've got the positioning and I've also got the light today I just need to come back when the conditions are right for this shot even though it's never going to deal with the problems I've put a 0.6 neutral density filter on the top just to darken the sky down just to bring the contrast level closer to the darker portions of the frame and the floor because it's quite bright I've got a 0.3 angled across the, that bright part of the floor but also because we've got oak leaves and we've got beech leaves which are really quite shiny um, when they're on the floor they can be quite reflective so I've got the polarizer the case polarizer dial round just taking any reflections off so like I say it's never going to be an ideal shot but you get the, you'll, you'll get the feeling of, of what I want to end up with now that camera has got pretty wide 16 by 9 aspect ratio this beech tree here on the right hand side won't appear on the final image and of course when you get the mist or fog whatever um, a lot of the other distractions that are problematic today will pale into insignificance because of the two main um, dark structures of those two trees which form the base of the, of the picture so I'll grab that now and uh, let's see how it looks
Well, I'd certainly like to know what you thought of that image and also the other images from this morning. Let me know in the comments below, but don't go just yet. YouTube always rewards uh, videos that get watched right to the very end. I just wanted to say, to remind you that there's now a join button available on the channel and you can become a member of the channel for as little as 99p a month. And for that, you get early bird viewings of the films and also bonus images and general discussion about photography and where this channel's going, my ideas and thoughts, um, even little bits about my, my van that I'm doing up at the moment. Um, subscription is always good if you want to subscribe and you'll get notifications every time a new video gets uploaded and a thumbs up is also good too. All these things contribute to the, to the video ratings on YouTube so I really appreciate it. So until next time I'll say thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.